I love you. You complete me. I love you. I know. I love you. Obviously, you don't know me. I love you so much. Oh. I love you, and if you'll have me, I want you to be my wife. I'm sorry, Byron, I love her. Because I love you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I love you, too. Hello? I love you. Everyone uses the words, the phrase, the three words, I love you. As a matter of fact, we use them flippantly. Sometimes we mean it. I love ice cream. I love the summer. I love movies. And then sometimes we use them in a meaningful fashion where you say to someone that you really, truly do love, I love you. The question is, the problem is, what does that really mean? And for some people, even looking at the Bible, we really don't get a full enough understanding of what it means to love. But it's important to know what it means to love. Why? Because the Bible commands us to love and we're told that we are loved by God. As a matter of fact, the most famous passage in the Bible is John 3, 16. How does it start off? For God so loved the world. What does it mean that God loves the world? Love. We all have our definitions. We all use it. Which definition? What definition is correct? Jesus speaks to Peter and he says to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? What does Peter struggle with saying? He says to him, you know, I love you. Of course, I love you. He says, tend to my sheep. He asked him a second time, do you love me? He says to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then he said to him a third time, Simon, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he asked him a third time, do you love me? In other words, what does that mean? Now, before we go into it, some are going to want to dissect the words that we see and think that there really is a big difference between, let's say, the word agape and the word phileo. And truth be told, they are not. How do we know? Because if we look over here to the right onto the Greek, uh, and then we'll get into what this word actually means. Let's just look at the few times that the word is used. Here he say he used the word uh, agapas, which is from agape. And Peter says, yes, I love you. But he uses philo. Jesus says in verse 16, a second time, do you love me? And Peter says, Lord, I love you. But he uses the word philo. So is he saying this because philo is a different kind of love? Well, let's continue. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, this time Jesus uses the word and then Simon comes back with the same word, love. As a matter of fact, there are times where we see in the Bible where it says that God loves the son, meaning Jesus, and he uses that word. And so it's important to understand that the words agape and the word phileo don't necessarily mean a different type of love as though phileo is not a godly love. It's just a brotherly love. No, it means it, it, it can be extended to a brother. But there is no difference between the two types of love or the target of the love. What's important is understanding what does it mean? Remember, we have been given these two great commandments. When I asked Jesus was asked this question, what are the greatest commandments? Or what is the greatest commandments? He says in Matthew 22, 30, let's start 37. He says, first, you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart. Now, that's always been a command. Love the Lord God with all your heart. Love him with all your soul. And love him with all your mind. Again, God, help us out. What does it mean to love you? And then he says, the second great commandment is like this. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. That might help us out there. When we think about ourselves, how we love ourselves, and that's how we should love our neighbors. But truthfully, that should also be how we love God. That might help to understand what we can use to glean from that to understand what love means. So I want to offer you this. Do this. Someone told me this. A former mentor told me this. And it works. It works perfectly. Use the word when you come to the word love. That is, if you really mean love. I love my wife. I love my children. Uh, obviously, we love ourselves. I love God. I want to love my neighbors. What does the word love mean? Well, insert when you get to the word love, insert the word commit in its various derivations. If it's committed, committing, will commit. What does it mean to commit? That then will give us a good understanding of the word love. For the Lord, for God was so committed to the world. Well, commitment means that you are giving something, giving of yourself, giving of your time. And in this case, giving of your life, giving of your resources, which we all should do. Do you love your spouse? Do you love your children? You're so committed to them, to seeing the good that you would do whatever it takes. And so when we say the word love, we think of the word love, that's how we ought to think of it. Commit, commitment, committed. 
And then that will kind of give us a better understanding. So when we use the word, we won't use it flippantly because me, while I might love ice cream, I'm not committed to it. While I might love uh, this sort of drink, while I might love hanging out and doing this, I'm not committed to it. But when it comes to my family, I'm committed. And when it comes to God, yes, I am. And when it comes to God being committed to us, without question, he's committed to us. Amen. Amen.